Hello, I'm Raina Hewitt. I teach at the University of South Carolina's art department, and I'd like to introduce you to my show, Persistence. Over the last four years, following the election, I was inspired to do a series in recognition of the women that have paved the path for us today. And so I have traveled through the uh, suffrage movement and into politics with these women, science, athletics, dance, in every area that I could try to think of. It is becoming uh, quite a task in that I constantly hear of women that I have not yet recognized. And so at this point, I have chosen to continue working on this. In this particular exhibit, I believe there's 67 of my medals in recognition of women. And I have, in actuality, made a totality of 103 at this point. They are made of vitreous enamel, which means ground glass that is painted on to a piece of metal and fired into a kiln. And then I etch a brass, copper, and sterling silver uh, metal portions that the enamels are placed in. The first piece that I created was Victoria Claflin Woodhull, which is this uh, center piece. And uh, she was an inspiration because, as I mentioned earlier, I started this series right after the last election in 2016, our national election in 2016. Victoria Woodhill was the very first woman to ever run for president of the United States, years before women had the vote. Of course, she didn't win. At any rate, you can see the face is a vitreous enamel, and around her and you have a brass foreground that is etched with a lace-like pattern. And I have, on top of that, set zircoins, CZs, all around. I wanted something very feminine. and. I chose to make a bow as her clasp because these are metals and you wear a metal. At the base, there is a small disc that has woven hair in it. And that comes from the practice of the 19th century in which people to honor their ancestors or their loved ones who might be going into a battle would have a piece of jewelry made out of woven hair, and that is the base. I've used sterling silver, brass, and copper in the piece. Uh, on the exterior, there's a sterling silver uh, beaded edge, and on the rear of this piece, I used a piece of pierced sterling silver, again, to reference that very feminine aspect. This was a very brave woman to go out into the world and put herself forth in that manner. Another thing I want you to take note is how I've chosen to display this. Whenever an artist creates work, they need to think in the long range of how it will be presented to the public. And I chose to use vitrines and frames because one, to some degree, they seal the elements around, thus cutting down on oxidation on the metal. And also, uh, it's a very uh, delicate fashion of uh, installation. I create these stands for each one. Every single piece is individual 
uh, and that the spacing is different. So uh, a great deal of care has to go into uh, determining how it will be displayed. Here's Alice Paul. She was an American suffragette. She had originally uh, traveled to Europe, lived in England for a while, and became very enamored with the suffrage movement. And in turn, when she came back to the United States, she became a very vocal member of the women's suffrage movement and eventually would write the Equal Rights Amendment that still has not been approved for the Constitution. In this particular case, we have three pieces that deal with um, the gradual moving forward in the civil rights here in America. Uh, we have Harriet Tubman in the center, Rosa Parks, and Ella Baker. Harriet Tubman was a, a very early piece, and with Harriet, I started thinking about how she helped to break chains for many enslaved uh, people. And so to break those chains, you have to open the lock. And I made a little lock based on what locks look more like during the 19th century. And then the background or the surround around Harriet Tubman is from a map of uh, the Underground Railroad, you can see the coal connected rivets uh, that help put it together, and behind that, you see a chain that has been broken. With Rosa Parks, I placed a bus, uh, that, and that is a copy or a duplicate of the particular bus that she rode, or rode in in Alabama. And over here with Ella Baker, we have some of the protest signs that were in a march that she was involved in. With regard to the enameling process, it has been a learning experience for myself all the way. Uh, and, and it has been a difficult journey. You might wonder as you walk through this exhibit why I chose some women and didn't choose others. Part of it is I might have put them in the kiln too long. And literally 30 seconds too long can make the face began to deteriorate and not be as clean cut. And that's the case with Ruth Bader Ginsburg. I use a multi-step process. First, I start out by cutting out pieces of copper and doming them. Now, there are a couple of uh, enamels in here that are done on steel. And it's easy to recognize the ones on steel from the ones on copper the steel ones are flat, whereas the coppers are dumb. Once you have the piece of metal cut, I have to cover it with white powdered enamel. I fire it in a kiln to 1450 degrees. That's the easy part. After the white enamel's on, I begin the portrait. Now, I've looked up photographs of all these women and then I put them on a uh, type of iron oxide transfer paper that I transfer onto the white glass enamel. And that gives me a rough outline to work with. That I then fire at a lower temperature, around 1400 degrees, and it gives me the faintest outline of the shape and the position of their different facial parts. 
Then looking at the original photograph that I had, I began to paint in with watercolor enamels. And I used water just like I was watercoloring. And I slowly began painting in the face and putting in all the details. Timing is essential with doing enamels. And certain colors can't handle just three degrees more than another color. Red being the most difficult of all the enamel colors. Uh, it will very turn, quickly turn into black. And so, in looking at some of these, uh, you will see that their facial tones might be more successful than others. Ruth Bader's, she burned out a little bit. She was in the kiln a little too long. So here we have uh, Jeanette Rankin, and I made her, I believe, uh, back in March of this year. And with her, you can see the details are very clear, the tonality of her flesh, um, Caucasian pinky color is very hard to achieve, uh, turned out just very well, and it's because I've learned exactly what I need to turn off my can or open up the door of the kiln and uh, pull them out. And that's another thing, you know, just the slightest little thing like the phone ringing and reaching for it can throw me off on opening up the kiln. So I have destroyed many an enamel uh, that I had begun working on. In terms of the process of etching the metal, that too has been a journey for me in which I have learned a great deal. Now here's one of the early pieces, and as you travel through the show, you'll see that the older pieces are a little less complex than the newer pieces. Uh, you might not know that it's a newer piece, but if it's really complex, it's probably more recent, and it's because of this journey. Initially, I was using a technique of etching metal in which you use ferric chloride. And um, ferric chloride is some nasty red stuff that goes everywhere. At any rate, it's slow and it doesn't give you a very clean etch. But I eventually learned of another technique using a very low voltage electricity, you could even use a battery in fact for this, and the chemical cupric nitrate. And with that, I get a really clean etch to the point that now I can etch the metal with um, photographic processes. Each one of these metals, I have made sure that they're not alike. Every single one, the metal portion, in some way varies from all the others. And I want it to reflect something about that individual. So Mother Jones was a leader in the labor movement, and she is known for the protests that she participated in. And I found a photograph of Mother Jones protesting uh, in a protest march, and so she, that is a, on the metal portions of this particular uh, metal that I created of her. This particular metal is uh, Sarah Breedlove, whose other pseudonym is Madam C.J. Walker. And she came up with a series of beauty products for African-American women. And in deciding to do her, I looked at what her products look like. And this is based on the lid of her hair care uh, jars that she sold. Uh, and she is the first female millionaire here in the United States, multiple millionaire. 
uh, very successful woman. And it, here we have multiple layers, and it says beauty culture, because that was what was across the top of that jar. Here with Aretha Franklin, I looked up different album jackets and found this type of font was used for some album that she created. And so I decided to do it almost like in neon lights, but that instead of neon, we used sterling silver. In her history, she won 18 Grammy Awards, and so I decided that on the platter, as they I've always referred to them, I would place a Grammy Award. I additionally set in uh, cubic zirconiums on this particular piece. And looking at these pieces, some of them you will notice have rivets. The metal is put together in different methods. The lettering was done with soldering, but then I connected the brass to the copper with rivets. So this fashion of connection we refer to as coal connected. So each one of these pieces is a combination of both high temperature soldering and coal connecting metal. In creating each one, I did a little bit of research about each individual. And for Diane Arbus, I found out what brand of camera she preferred. And then I created a metal that is a facsimile of the front face of the camera that she used. Louise Nevelson. I looked at her various assemblages and I decided that I would create a assemblage silhouette for her background and so this is totally inspired by shapes that were within one of her uh, assemblages. For Chanel, I decided that I needed to make a background or the metal appear like a Chanel handbag, those uh, quilted hand, leather handbags. And so I took a piece of cardboard, and on that piece of cardboard, I glued wire in a grid, laid a piece of brass on top of it, and I have a machine called the hydraulic press. It's not really a machine, it's a jack with a metal plate. That, and I smushed it, and the metal went down in there and pillowed into that uh, shape. And then, in turn, the edge is to appear as a chain, because Chanel bags have a chain uh, for their strap. And, Wilton leather. Here we have uh, Maya Angelou, and she was one of the more difficult ones that I've made just because I saw out, pierced out every single one of the little bars for the birdcage. I ended up having to do this one twice uh, because I kept on breaking the different things. It's two layers of brass on top of a copper layer, and in the uh, layer behind the bars, you have a, a bird sitting in her in the cage, and that's inspired by uh, her poem I, "I Know Why the Cage Bird Sings," which I've always thought was just a brilliant poem.
Here we have Hedy Lamar. And Hedy Lamar was a beautiful actress at, during the 30s and uh, 40s, but she also was a brilliant woman. And she came up with a method that would help uh, the military avoid having torpedoes uh, hit ships. And it's some sort of a radio signal breaking up that they could, uh, it's kind of like a radar business. Don't ask me, I'm not a scientist. But uh, she figured this out and she drew a diagram of how this was, uh, would work. It was submitted for patenting. In turn, I looked up the image of this particular diagram and I wanted to etch that into the brass. In order to get something precisely etched into a piece of metal, there is a product called PNP Blue. And it is a sheet of paper that is the most beautiful shade of royal blue in the world. And it was designed by an engineer for making circuit boards. And he ran it through a Xerox machine. And in the Xerox machine, everything that's black is black iron oxide. And the principle is metal sticks to metal when there's heat applied. So I laid the blue paper on top of my clean metal and I heat it up to 450 degrees. The blue paper everywhere that was black stuck to the metal. And on the opposite side of the black side, it's blue and it's plastic. So it resists the chemicals, as in etching ground, and then I etched it. Margaret Sanger. Margaret Sanger helped to create uh, family planning here in the country. Up until the 1930s, it was illegal for women to be uh, taught how they could prevent pregnancy. And she had to work with very poor people and was appalled with some of the conditions they lived in. So when I started thinking about Margaret Sanger, I said, how am I going to portray Margaret Sanger? And I decided fallopian tubes and a uterus was a way to go. It's a rather floral grouping of body parts, but I think it gets the message across. So no matter how you feel about Margaret Sanger, we have to recognize her contribution uh, in helping us uh, with our decisions in terms of family. I chose the title Persistence, um, partially, probably some influence of uh, Elizabeth Warren using the term subconsciously, I don't know, but it is the ideal term for what these women have done. They were persistence, they plod along, and they have given us a wonderful road that we are traveling through today. And so I hope and you can come see this exhibition and experience a little bit of history in a uh, very visual manner. This exhibition is open through December 6th.